sexually harassed and I'm fighting back. It happens to roughly 1 in 3 women in the workplace, a cosmopolitan survey found, but 70% of them don't report it. Former Fox News co-host Andrea Tinteros tells why she risked everything to file a lawsuit and speak out. Andrea Tinteros was a rising star at Fox News. A political analyst and co-host of the popular show The Five when she says the powerful head of the company, Roger Isles, began sexually harassing her, as she alleges in an ongoing lawsuit. He asked her to spin around to show him her body, to wear a tighter dress and to hug him, in addition to prying into her love life, speculating about how she would look in a bikini, and asking her to discuss the sex lives of other employees flagrant misogyny, that was the environment, she says. Tenteros alleges she reported the harassment and was first ignored, then later told to drop it because Isles was a powerful man, but she didn't drop it. I don't care how much power men have, they don't have the right to disrespect women, she says. The network moved her to a much less visible show with no explanation, she says in her lawsuit and no announcement to alert viewers. As Tinteros tells it, she was blackballed and badmouthed by executives and blocked from publicity opportunities. And in what she saw as the ultimate act of retaliation, she was yanked off the air this past April, hours before the launch of her book about feminism, tied up in knots. The network maintains it suspended her because the book was unauthorized. She has called that claim outrageously false. In July, former Fox News anchor Gretchen Carlson filed a sexual harassment and retaliation suit against Isles. After an internal investigation by parent company 21st Century Fox, Isles departed the network with a $40 million severance. In August, Tenteros filed her own suit against Fox News, Isles, and four network executives alleging the details of sexual harassment and retaliation outlined in this article. Representatives for all the defendants deny her claims. In a court filing, Fox noted that the company had made clear its commitment to making things right with women who had been disrespected but that Tenteros is not a victim. She is an opportunist whose lawsuit is filled with falsehoods. In September, 21st Century Fox settled the Carlson suit for $20 million. Tentero says she was offered a settlement too, in the seven figures which she rejected as it would have required her to renounce her claims and agree to eternal silence. At press time, the parties remained at war with Fox News and Isles trying to move the case to private arbitration. Here, Tinteros describes the ordeal laid out in her lawsuit and offers her advice on what to do if you're ever harassed. Don't let fear stop you. As women, we may initially want to ignore harassment. It feels easier to shut it down and not acknowledge it ever happened or hope it goes away. But that approach never works. It's much better to have a reputation for being bossy and standing up for yourself than to be someone who doesn't. That other road is not easiest in the long run. I feared I'd be punished. That was the inherent culture of Fox, challenge the regime and you would pay a price. Despite my fear, I knew I couldn't stay silent. That's where courage comes into play. Courage is resistance to fear, not the absence of it. Never feel embarrassed. Isles asked me to turn around so he could get a good look at me, so he could view my posterior. At Fox, the horror stories of Isles asking women to do this were so prevalent because women had commiserated about it that it was deemed the twirl. I was insulted. I'm a very all-business type of person. So when you're meeting with the CEO of the company, that's your moment to discuss how to improve ratings and make the show better. I also felt embarrassed. It's odd because the harasser should really be the one to feel embarrassed for acting like a pig, not the woman being subjected to harassment. I actually furrowed my brow and looked at him and went, uh, no, my facial expression was a mix of disgust and wanting to smack him across the face. Keep an email trail. I suggest sending emails to superiors documenting the harassment and saving the emails on a file at home, not on your work computer. Keep a backup on a flash drive in case something happens with your personal computer. 
I also recommend keeping a journal, if an executive is the one doing the harassing. Go to human resources or to another executive or to the general counsel. If you don't get an answer from one person, go to someone else. In my case, I also went to my attorney. If you don't have an attorney, hire one for a consult. It's usually only a couple hundred dollars and it's worth more than those Jimmy Choo's, I promise. Talk to someone you can trust. With sexual harassment, especially when it involves retaliation, there is a lot of emotion that comes along with it. You're almost stunned because it's this realization that sexism is alive and well, still. It's always helpful to talk to somebody about it. Then you have somebody who can validate your claims. And also help you deal with what it feels like to be harassed and retaliated against. Support other women. My therapist decided to come forward and to validate my claims because she couldn't stand the portrayal of me in the press as a liar. I'm not sure there are words that could accurately capture the gratitude I felt. She emailed me after reading the press reports and said, I know that you are telling the truth in my moment of trouble when most people run the other way, especially when it's such a public fight with an adversary as big and powerful and intimidating as Fox News, she chose to run towards me. As ugly as the story is, there is a beautiful flashpoint of women supporting other women. Don't feel you have to quit. When sexual harassment came up during this presidential election, I heard people say that if a woman is being sexually harassed, she should just quit. Absolutely not. Why should a woman have to give up everything she's worked for because some repugnant creep can't act professional and keep his emotions in check? Some women may want to quit and that's their choice. And no one should stay in a job where physical or mental danger exists. But women should know they have options, they can stay and fight through their company's stated solutions mechanism. Or leave and fight through a legal process. Don't get too personal. Watch out for questions about your romantic status or your personal life choices. I was asked if I ever wanted to get married, if I wanted to have children. Avoid personal questions about your colleagues. You don't want to be the facilitator of a predator by providing information. It's also just bad business. Don't participate in disrespectful talk about your colleagues, it'll always come back and haunt you. Also, be mindful of men who complain about their relationships. Because it's often used as a trial balloon to see how a woman will react. That's one thing that Isles did a lot. Refuse to take the bait. Lean on a partner. Cheryl Sandberg gave great advice in Lean In. The single most important career decision that a woman makes is whether she will have a life partner and who that partner is. One of the reasons I had the courage to fight is because I've been blessed with the best partner a woman could possibly ask for. He's the one who encouraged me to take on this fight. He supports me through the good days and the bad days of litigation and he unequivocally has my back so that I can lean in and keep my eyes on the target. In battle, two is always better than one. You might not always have that person by your side, but there is importance in the notion that no woman is an island. Think about the big picture. Every woman has to do what's best for her. But in my case, it wasn't about taking the check and shutting up. I felt a responsibility to clean up a sexist culture and fight back for the women Fox had bullied and bought off and silenced before me and for the ones who may still be there, fearful of speaking out. It's about systemic change. There has to be cultural change. The only way to change the culture is to fight. The only way that women are ever going to eradicate sexism is if we kill it. The only way to kill it is to fight it.